Hi, Junior Rangers. I'm Miss Jen. And I'm Miss Kate. And we're here to talk to you about the butterfly life cycle today. So we're going to start by talking about how insects change a lot as they grow. And we have a really special word. It's a big, long, fancy word for how insects change as they grow. And it's called metamorphosis. metamorphosis. So let's take a look at butterflies metamorphosis. Starting with the egg. And the egg is going to be really tiny, usually on the back of a leaf. But you can see this is uh, showing monarch eggs on a milkweed leaf. And the painted lady egg is a very tiny turquoise egg, which this is a big model to show you bigger. These are examples of eggs from a cabbage white butterfly. You can see they're all clumped together, little yellow dots on a leaf. So these are all examples of what butterfly eggs look like. Okay, so once they're ready to hatch, the caterpillars will start to emerge from the eggs. They're very, very tiny. They have small teeth and legs for climbing and crawling. So let's look at examples of the monarch and painted lady caterpillars. We have the monarch has black, yellow, and white stripes on its body because it's uh, poisonous. It's warning and the painted lady is black and gray. So that's the caterpillar. The caterpillars will munch plants until they get really, really big. And then we have the next part of the life cycle, which is called a chrysalis or a cocoon in the case of moths. And a chrysalis is kind of a hard casing. And these are examples of the green monarch chrysalis and the brown painted lady chrysalis. And I'm going to show you uh, some photos of the cabbage white caterpillar that is turning into a chrysalis. It attaches with a silk thread to a leaf or stem and it transforms from a caterpillar into a chrysalis. So I have one other picture which is really amazing, which shows the entire, this happens so fast that you would miss it if your camera wasn't set up very, very quickly. So this is the caterpillar that actually its whole skin changes into a chrysalis in, a, in a, under a minute. So that is the change from a caterpillar to a chrysalis. And they could be in this stage for about a week or 10 days. And then they transform one more time, and now they're an adult butterfly. So here we have the adult monarch and the adult painted lady. So that's a very quick example of the life cycle of a butterfly. And here's our cabbage white adult as well. So you can see examples of all of those butterfly life cycles. And all insects go through metamorphosis and change as they grow. It's just that some insects look very different as they grow and other ones are just smaller versions of the adults as they grow. We have an example to show you with ladybugs as well. We have an example of ladybugs that go through metamorphosis too. And you can see they start with eggs, just like the butterfly life cycle did, right underneath a leaf. Then they will go to their larval stage. They look a lot different than the ladybug you know when it's an adult. After that, they'll go into a pupa stage, as you can see right here, still trying to form that ladybug that we all know and love. And then after the pupa stage comes the adult ladybug. That's another way bugs go through metamorphosis. So butterflies and moths 
both go through that same kind of metamorphosis from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis or cocoon and then adult. So we're going to look at some differences between butterflies and moths because they're quite similar and lots of people mix them up. So what would be one difference? Here's some clues here on this board. Think about when we see butterflies versus when we see most moths. At what time of day? So, butterflies we're typically going to see during the day, and that has a term diurnal. So butterflies are diurnal, where moths are usually out at night, and that term is nocturnal. Okay. The next thing you might notice is the antenna. This is the most important difference between butterflies and moths. The antenna of a butterfly is what we call clubbed. And clubbed just means it's really skinny and has a, like a dot or a round thing at the end. That's a clubbed antenna. We're gonna take a real close look at a picture as well. For moths, they will have feathered antenna, and that's a big difference between butterflies and moths. So if you ever get up close to one of them, you can kind of look at the antenna, and if it's feathered, you know it's a moth. If it's clubbed, you know it's a butterfly. This shows the clubbed antenna of a butterfly. Notice how it's really skinny and comes to a little round end. So that's a clubbed antenna. And then here is a great example of a moth that has really big feathered antenna. Do you see a difference in their body? So butterflies are going to usually have a thinner body, as you can see in the picture here. And moths are going to have a thick and fuzzy body. Okay, and there's one more difference, and the hint is down here. We showed you some examples of what we call the pupa stage, and we looked at the monarch chrysalis, which was a beautiful green color. That's what we're showing here in the poster. So that is called a chrysalis in a butterfly's life cycle, and for most of our moths, they form a cocoon. And the main difference between those is that a chrysalis is just the pupa and nothing else around it. It's like usually smooth, where a cocoon has leaves and mud and other stuff wrapped around the pupa. So we'll take a look at some examples of those as well. Okay, these are the examples between cocoons and chrysalises. So these show that there's a pupa inside and there's other stuff wrapped around it. So you could see mud. On this one you can really see the leaves wrapped all around it. And this one has leaves and silk wrapped around it. So these are all examples of cocoons that came from here in Burlington County Parks. And then we have the, the, the chrysalises which really don't last because they're sh usually smooth and once they emerge from the chrysalis, then they become a butterfly. These are some old ones that show there's nothing wrapped around it. They're just, it's just the pupa and nothing else. Most people think that when they see a brown or white colored butterfly or moth, that it's always going to be a moth. And that's, that's not the case. Um, moths and butterflies can be very colorful or very drab, which means um, to their environment, so browns or whites. One that we get a lot is the cabbage white, which is a very white butterfly and it's out during the day. A lot of people mistake them with moths, but they are a butterfly. So here we have examples of, of different butterflies and moths that we see in Burlington County.
One of the best places in the park system to look for butterflies and moths in different parts of their life cycle is the Smith Woods Butterfly Garden. And that's where Miss Kate and I are right now. Here you can look for eggs, caterpillars, chrysalises, and adult butterflies and moths. So here's an example of a monarch caterpillar on its host plant milkweed and you'll be able to find little signs that they're here by them chewing and make sure you're looking on the underside of leaves because that's where they're typically going to be hanging out. We are at the host plant garden in the butterfly garden. This is the bed where we planted special plants for the caterpillars. So this is a really good place to look for caterpillars feeding on these plants. They could be in the other parts of the garden too, but this is the most likely place to see them. And right now we have black swallowtail caterpillars that are eating some of these plants that we planted just for them. So the one on the left here is shedding its skin to grow larger like the one next to him on the right. So we're going to take a look at them. There's all different sizes because they grow a lot over the, each day. So they start off really tiny and they're darker and then they get longer and longer and turn greener and greener as they grow. And you can actually see that here in this, in this host plant bed. We just saw all of the different caterpillars from the black swallowtail caterpillar. And now, if we look right on the host bed, there is actually a black swallowtail chrysalis too. So we hope you enjoyed this introduction to butterfly life cycle. There's lots to see out in nature right now. So good luck finding different kinds of insects in different parts of their life cycle. We look forward to seeing pictures of what you find. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.